Welcome back to The Bank Guide. I'm your bank guide, Colin. And today is another video in the 5-Minute Logic Expert Series where I'm bringing you 30 tips and tricks for recording, mixing, and mastering in Logic in 30 days. And today we're looking at fades, crossfades, and their surprise friend, the speed up or slow down function, which is really cool and I didn't realize you could do for a long time. And this is something you don't have if you're coming from GarageBand. You don't have this in GarageBand. It's something that's unlocked in Logic that really helps you get uh, better editing. It's a really powerful editing tool. Let's just jump straight into it and see what this thing can do. So. One thing to note before we even jump into a specific example is that I recommend you go under your settings under general and go to editing and make sure that pointer tool and tracks provides has fade tool click zones enabled. What this allows you to do is just pull from the top of a region to add a fade in crossfade or fade out. Uh, it just makes it much, much faster than having to enable the crossfade tool. So we don't want to do that. But let's start by just listening to an example here so I can show you when a fade, a crossfade and a fade out can be really helpful. Let's check it out. You're calling me at a quarter to three. Somebody ought to call the doctor way I'm back on my feet. You're sending me. So obviously we're listening to this in solo so we can have, hear every little detail in the context of the full mix. You might not hear some of these things, but especially with something that's gonna be so prominent like the vocal, I typically try to get it as smooth and, and seamless as I can. And the big thing that I hear is really right here where we punch together two different phrases. This is very common. This is when you comp a vocal together. So you record a bunch of takes and then pull the best phrases from each. And right here, you can just tell that it's happening. There's a little pop. Doctor, way I'm back on my feet. Right where she says back. Doctor, way I'm back on my feet. And then you can also hear it kind of end at the end. And then when it comes back in right here, you can hear it come back in. You're sending me. So let's start by looking at that pop. This is a perfect situation for a crossfade. A crossfade is where we just fade between the two audio points. And to do this, if I just select this region and then pull over the region next to it, then it automatically creates a crossfade between them. And we can make that as wide or as short as we want to. I just want enough that's gonna cover that pop. Let's see if that fixed it. Away, I'm back on my feet. Right, it's just gone immediately, right? You don't hear one here, but I typically do still do a crossfade anywhere that I have two regions butting against each other, uh, but you don't hear it. So it probably would be okay without it. You don't need to be obsessive about this. And then you hear kind of as it ends here. And that's a perfect case for, you guessed it, a fade out. So by pulling across here, we can just fade out. My feet. You and then to kind of cover up it coming back in right there, I can just pull to add a fade in and listen to this. You're sending me. You would never know that it's fading back in right there. So you can see how that's really powerful for something like editing a vocal. But let me show you another couple examples of how and when you might want to use it. So uh, later on in this song, we have this cool Mellotron thing here that's just fading in over a short period. So instead of automating that, I just wanna fade it in here. It's much faster than doing a whole automation series and I'm not doing heavy dynamic processing that's affecting the sound. So it makes sense for it to happen at the region level as opposed to on the volume fade which is would be after all the compression and stuff. Let's listen to that. It's this sound right here. So I was able to create a fade here and then just use this tool right here to bend it to get the right kind of curve that made sense where it sounded the way I wanted it to. So playing around with it and getting it adjusted the way you want it to, it can become a really cool creative tool to fade things in and out like this. You can also obviously use it to fade out any sort of guitar note or strum that you want to sustain, but you want to have control over exactly how long it rings out. You can use a fade out for that kind of thing as well. Now let's look at the kind of twin brother that comes along with these fades, which is that they can actually speed up or slow down. So if you've ever heard like kind of that record scratch barrel effect, you can actually do that with this, which I think is really cool. Uh, so for example, this song has this kind of fade in intro thing. And at the end of it, it ends with like these four hits. And I think it'd be cool if that last one went like da, 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 down. So let's do that. So all we have to do to do that, it's incredibly simple. You just do a fade and then you right click on it or you can do that also by holding control on the keyboard. And then you just select slow down. And now what happens is it's gonna hit that last hit. 
mean, that's just cool, right? And then you can do the same thing just in reverse if you have anything that you wanna speed up, kind of like a record swelling into something. So that's fades, crossfades, and speeds up and slow downs. Super cool, speed up and slow downs. That's like hard to say. Super cool feature, the fades and crossfades are something you should use all the time. And then, you know, you might find a place in a lot of songs that you end up using those speed up and slow downs. They're just really cool. Now, if you're struggling to get a mix in Logic that you're proud of, I wanna give you something. I put together a six step checklist that just goes through the six steps that all professional mixes have and how you can do them specifically inside Logic. I've tweaked it to be specific to Logic since I'm going through the series, but this is a guide I've had for years. Thousands of people have downloaded it. I get emails every day about how helpful it is. So be sure to pick it up. It's completely free from link in the description below. Before you go, I'd love to hear from you. Have you used that speed up, slow down function? Are you gonna try it? Let me know in the comments below. If this video is helpful, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you tomorrow with another five minute Logic Expert. One thing